is up everybody it's render 7 on here and I'm gonna be doing a tutorial video today on mission building in DCS world now it's gonna be a series of videos uh, this first mission building video is gonna be getting started uh, the first video and we're not gonna have all kind of crazy unit placement getting the mission editor none of that today so it might be kind of boring so bear with me but this will help you become a better mission builder with a good foundation okay that's what we're going to focus on today so it's more of a lecture but it's, it's good information okay so um i hope you enjoy this we're going to start these tutorial videos from start to finish and actually create a mission from start to finish go through all the steps that uh, i do the ranger 79 way it may not be the best way but it's how i make missions and how i've been successful in the past making missions so um if you don't want to learn about making missions or if you don't really care, then this video is probably not for you. But if you want to learn from start to finish how to make a really good uh, user experience kind of mission, um, just keep watching, okay? So first thing we're going to look at is just getting started. is mission building in DCS world. Uh, it can be challenging and rewarding at the same time. We all know there's updates, patches come out. You have a mission you've worked on. You might Something might happen and change in the Lua configuration. That's the scripting in the game or... Something with the game that breaks your mission. When I say breaks, it doesn't function like it should. So, um, that's just being said. You have to go over that. And just keep pressing on. And uh, we're going to go over how to start the creation phase of a mission. Okay? So, number one. What kind of mission do you want to make? Okay, my suggestion is to start with a good road map. Uh, do you want an A10C base mission? SC-25? A mix uh, of aircraft? Uh, combined arms? That kind of thing? Uh, you want a close air support mission? It's gonna be simple. It's gonna be complex. Okay, these all matter. Okay. Um, how long do you want your mission to last? Okay. Uh, some missions I have last too long. I think um, after two, three hours, people start going AFK. They have you know stuff to do with the family or just you know stuff, real world stuff to do. So I would try to make your missions two hours or less. Um, especially for this mission, it's gonna be two hours or less. Okay. Are you going to make your mission single player or multiplayer? Now, this is a big deal because you think you're going to do both, and then you can. But the environment changes when you go multiplayer. For example, if I have a something set to explode on a unit, say I have explosion on a unit, say a tank at 20%. In single player, it'll, it'll cause some damage, okay? In multiplayer, say I have four slots for, for uh, four A10s, and I have one slot filled, that 20 well, actually, it'll it'll be the 20% or 20 power of that explosion might operate differently than when single player. If I have four slots full of people, users online, it might blow the tank up. So you got to do some testing. Stuff changes when you go online from single to multiplayer. So make sure if you do a multiplayer mission or single or both, you test it in single player, full through, and multiplayer. Try to get the slots filled with how many people are supposed to be in the mission and go from there before you release it. Okay. That's why I get a lot of uh, flack sometimes about taking too long for your missions or, you know, this happens. Testing takes a long time and you'll test it, get it great, and then patch might come out and something changes very slightly and it might ruin a trigger or it might mess something up. So you got to bear with the mission designers, guys. You guys are going to feel our pain going through these tutorials and once you do your missions, okay? But it is rewarding. Let's keep that in mind. So this is supposed to be a tutorial and to help you guys out. That's what I'm doing. All right. Another thing you want to consider do you require any mods for your missions? Okay, um, I just recently released a mission, the ISIS Crisis Campaign. It required, for mission one, it required a Desert Train mod and an Object Pack mod. There's pros and cons of that. The pros are it makes for a better user experience. They're, it's based in Afghanistan, uh, Syria, uh, Iraq region kind of thing. Um, and the Object Pack was more those kind of vehicles for that terrain, that region. The bad thing is that everyone has to have the same mod pack, same version pretty much, and or they can't play. And if a patch comes out and breaks either your mission or the object pack, you're kind of hosed. So I'm kind of taking a chance of that one, so we'll see how it happens. So for this mission, we're going to start from scratch. We're going to use default DCS vehicles and uh, aircraft and scenarios, no mods. Uh, do you have a scenario mapped out in your head or on paper? I recommend having your objectives mapped out. And what you want to accomplish in the mission. Remember, this is your creation for the community. Um, you're trying to put your thoughts, your vision, your creation onto onto this mission, and you want everyone to enjoy it. So you want to map it out so you're not in your mission 
trying it what happens is you'll start you start one thing you want to add something else want to add something else, all of a sudden you got too much stuff going on and it's not really focused the mission okay do you have a background story or background for your mission i highly recommend this some people don't agree with me on this but i think it enhances the user experience and ensures you stay on track as a mission designer okay uh, will you create multiple missions for a campaign or just a single mission if you're starting out right now guys uh, i start with a single mission and maybe you decide to expand later. You can add more and make a campaign. But we're going to start out with a single mission, okay? Um, do you want to have voice scripts in your mission? Do you want to have enhanced instructions? Do you want to have a missed script? Do you want to have advanced scripting? These are all great. They all enhance the mission experience. They're all extra bells and whistles that enhance the mission. But take a lot of work. They're not really required to, to have an enjoyable experience of a mission. They will enhance it. But we're going to make a mission that's going to be enjoyable. Uh, without too much stuff going on, we're going to have some flag on, flag off, uh, unit placement, and just the structure of a mission for these videos. So, uh, it'll help you out. So, what we're going to do, we're going to go through, and this, like I said, we're going to start out, put our mission type and scenario down. So, our mission type for our mission we're going to be building is a multiplayer mission. We have two player, A10 Charlie, uh, day mission. Duration will be no more than two hours. The objectives for this mission, we're going to have three main objectives. For our users, uh, no mods, and we're gonna name it Operation Take Back, which just made up. Okay, uh, quick little scenario. I'll go into more of this in the background story and objectives in a second, but this is just based here. Quick scenario: Hostile forces in Georgia have taken over Tasi Air Base in the surrounding areas. Um, they have they include mixed armor, infantry, man pad, AA units, and a lot of the district support or supply support. And the higher command wants us to uh, engage the ground targets and provide cash for friendly forces in the region. Very simple. Here's our objectives. We're going to destroy all armored units at Katasi Air Base, destroy all AA units at Katasi Air Base, and repel counterattack forces from the east of Katasi Air Base. Then put that on there. All right, so we got kind of our, our base foundation, right? Started. Now we're going to look at an example. Now this is kind of fancy, so don't, don't get... This is this fire PowerPoint, but I want that I want you to look at the structure and how, how it kind of is a background story, objectives, that kind of thing. This is mission two from my Operation Piercing Fury campaign mission brief. Okay, so there was two missions so far. One was uh, Welcome to Seuss mission one, and two was Happy Bus. And Happy Bus is broken into two parts, but I won't go into that. It got way too big. All right, so here's your campaign status. Here's your overview, your background story up top here. Now that's pretty much all you need if you're doing a single player or multiplayer with a one mission. Here's your campaign or your background story. Now for this one, I actually include an after action report for Welcome to Seuss, which is mission one. So you're going along in, in the progression here. You went through mission one, you finished it, and here's what happened, your after actions, and here's the current situation, the bottom paragraph for the user. So that's an example of um, how to write it. And you wanna make, you wanna make it look real, uh, realistic as possible, Try to do your research. If you're doing a cast mission, uh, cash, cast mission, or you're doing um, different things, go online, do some research, go on the forums, make sure it's not unbelievable. This is pretty believable if it could really happen. That kind of thing. All right, so here's our objective page. And this is all fancy, but you don't got to do all this. You can just, just write this down and get it ready before you start your mission building, okay? And then you can put this all on paper later or include it inside the actual mission brief in the mission. Uh, when you're flying in multiplayer or in a single player, I can show you where to put that. And they can all be there for the user to see at any time during the mission. So this is just extra. This is a, a brief that was provided to the users in addition to the mission. To kind of enhance the, uh, enhance the environment, give more information. So we have our campaign objectives. They're in progress here. You have your mission one objectives, which says mission accomplished. We had two main objectives. We got them finished. Now mission two, which we're working on right now, this scenario... This example is still current. There's six objectives, okay? And you're laying them out there for everybody. So that's simple, quick, down dirty on going from starting out before you even open up Mission Editor, okay? Figure out what you wanna do, get a roadmap, find out what objectives you wanna have. Well, do you wanna have a background for your mission? Now that'd be all fancy and, and huge. Just make it something where the, the user can look at it and, and understand what's going on and why they're there and what they're supposed to do. The objectives will show them that. Um, it's to, we're going to do a single player mission. We're going to have very limited uh, enhanced instructions or enhanced scripting and voiceovers. We're not going to really do that. I might include 
quick tutorial on in the the missions videos to show you how to add like a sound effect so if something beeps up or you hear a certain sound and a text pops up it gets everyone's attention they can look at it and see okay here's our next tasking or here's our priority that kind of thing and here's our little snare we made mission type we're making very simple and our objectives so this is mission or it's mission <laughs> this is video one of uh, mission building and dcs and dcs world um we have more to come so uh this is getting started so i hope you enjoyed it wasn't too boring and i will talk to you soon render seven nine out